Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out Windows 11. This is gonna be my initial impressions first look video, checking out the new edition of Windows. Now this is a developer preview release, so there may be some changes. There's definitely, hopefully gonna be some uh, performance improvements because it is pretty laggy. Granted, I'm running off of a disk drive, but it, it's a little laggy. And I had a couple issues installing. Uh, by the way, the installer, or not the installer, but the setup screen is brand new. All the same exact options. The only difference really is the uh, graphical user interface and uh, just the visual appearance of it. You still can do the offline account, which is what I'm doing right here. Uh, with all that said, we're just going to run through the system and check out everything that is at least apparently noticeable. And before we do that, I just do want to note that this is currently installed on my primary machine and I am recording on this. This is OBS right here. And I'm doing this just so I can actually get the full performance experience and all that. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice visually different down here, we have our start menu and everything. It is all centered, uh, kind of like Mac basically. It's like a Mac dock, but it still has the full taskbar with all the windows stuff over here. This is kind of what I do in like KDE Plasma on Linux. So um, it's interesting that they went with this choice. Now down here, you have your start menu, you have search, you have the task view option and widgets, and then your favorited applications over here. And generally all this stuff, including the system tray and all that is the exact same as you saw in Windows 10. Now over here, if I go ahead and click on this start menu, this has been uh, completely redesigned basically. Uh, we can say goodbye to the live window tile things. Nobody used those anyways. So good riddance. Uh, I do like this look a lot better than the Windows 10 start menu. Now diving deeper into this, we can see some of the applications that we have on here, including Microsoft Edge and all the other Microsoft stuff. But in addition, we do have Spotify and Netflix in here by default. So I'm curious how much they paid to get them to do that. Uh, we have Twitter, Messenger, Photoshop Elements. And if I scroll down, we have some other basic stuff that you'd expect, including the uh, paint, notepad, and all that. Opening up notepad, you can see it's the exact same notepad. But if we take a look at this window, we can see that they are switching it up with more of a rounded theme. You can see the rounded corners there. And if I bring up an application that I know has buttons, uh, they went with the uh, rounding around the buttons too. And in certain applications, it looks a lot like Mac OS. So I think uh, that's kind of <laughs> the direction they're leaning is that kind of a modern design elements. Now, one thing I also noticed while I was setting up uh, my OBS studio is if I open up the file explorer, you can see the new folder icons for the uh, categorized folders under quick access, including desktop, downloads, documents, and all that. And that's another thing I think was a good move. In my opinion, they look absolutely beautiful. With that up here, you can see the ribbon has this uh, layout by default, and most of all this is changeable. Uh, if we look down here, it has the same formatting with the file tree that we usually see on the side. Now, one thing that's pretty cool is if I go over here and I hover over the maximize button, it gives me options to kind of tile it in specific areas that I would like. Now that's really cool, especially this one over here. So for example, if I wanted it to tile over here and then it will bring up OBS right here. If I clicked on that, it would full, not full screen it, but it would tile it over here. So they are implementing some better tiling functionality within their operating system. Uh, so if I wanted this to be all the way over here, I could have OBS open over here. It's pretty cool. It's all still mouse based. I'm not sure if there's keyboard shortcuts. That would be awesome if there were. But that is a very nice, that's a very good little tool that they have going for you right there. Especially nowadays with everybody having fairly large monitors. If you're, if you're wondering, this is recorded in 2K. So this is a 1440 screen. So especially for a screen like this, having it maximized like this just doesn't make sense. So that's awesome that they give you the option to do that. And if I had other windows open, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up a couple other things. Settings, because I'm going to want to jump in here in a second anyway. Uh, let's go notepad again, and then paint. So let's open up paint. And now, if paint will open, there we go. It's a heavy duty program. <laughs> uh, if we go maximize right here, and let's say I wanted paint to take up half of the screen over here, 
we can see it like that. We do see a little bit of glitching or something going on right here. But um, now over here, I could pick what will go in this tile. So I will select File Explorer. And now we can select what will go here. You can see it's not quite worked out with how this looks. So hopefully they uh, cut off the top bar here, kind of implement it that way. But I could click Settings and now we have a fully tiled interface within Windows 11. So that's super cool. Uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and check out our settings. So this is settings right here. Uh, we have system devices, phone, basically everything that you would expect. So for example, if I go over to system, a common thing you're gonna want to do is change the uh, display resolution. You can see here when I actually get into this setting, it looks exactly like it did in Windows 10. And we got some pretty nice uh, transparency here. So you can see what's going on behind this window right here. You can also see your uh, HDR settings there and anything else you'd really want to access. So now let's go ahead and go over to personalization because this is where I hope that they've changed some things. Oh, looks like I need to activate Windows before I can personalize my PC, uh, which I know I'm not going to do. So I might not be able to show you everything in here, but it looks like you, you could just change your background and choose the fit for that. Uh, under colors, yeah, so I can still show you, but I'm not gonna be able to do it. Uh, you have your colors here, so you could change all that. So there is options to change the colors to darker themes. Uh, under lock screen, you could change this, so you have all the different things you'd like to show. You can change your backgrounds, all that fun stuff. Under themes, you can see that they have Windows Light, Windows Dark, and a couple others, so that's really cool. Uh, if we go under fonts, this is the uh, typical font stuff you go ahead and select and change and add all your fonts over here under taskbar so this is cool um, looks like we have the taskbar alignment is center so you could go ahead and move this back if you do not like it centered and then we have the show widget stuff so we're going to check that out too in just a quick sec and you have badges the show task view so you could customize what is actually down here so that's pretty cool. Sorry I couldn't show you guys. I don't want to pay for a license for this. And I don't think I even can at this point. So let's close that out. Let's try the search functionality. So search, if we search OBS, it's something I installed on here. Uh, it was pretty quick. We can see that we have OBS. It has apps, so that's the actual full installer EXE. And then we can search the web. Over here we have run as admin, pin to start. All the stuff you'd want to easily access. Apps, Documents, Web, you can see that it integrates Bing Search, oh boy. So you could go ahead and easily search Bing through your uh, Start menu. So if you like that, if you like that, if you don't, I'm sorry. Um, right here we have the Task Viewer, so you kind of saw that when we were testing out the multitasking. This is all your current open applications, so if I just open up another one real quick and do that, you can see I have OBS as well as File Explorer. And there are additional desktops that you could go ahead and do. So if I opened up a new desktop, went to this desktop, opened up File Explorer, I can then migrate to those different desktops and I could do another one and another one. So that's pretty cool. Now if I go back to desktop one, close this out, open this, you can see desktop two is still there because I have OBS running, but go ahead and close that out and it should automatically, nope. To get rid of your desktops, you need to close them out like this. So let's hit the X and that desktop is gone. All right, so now let's check out this widget section. Let's see what this looks like. Oh no, okay. I get, I'll sign in to show you guys this. All right, so I went ahead and signed in. Now I'm just creating a pin because that's what it wants me to do. Uh, let's hit okay. And hopefully it works and everything's good to go. Oh God, that's old. I'm not even, I'm gonna block out that picture. I haven't used my uh, Microsoft account in ages. Okay, so let, let's close that out and try try this widgets again. So now if we go ahead to widgets, okay, so everything is right here. So these are all my widgets. That's kind of cool. And like I said, everything's rounded. It has the transparent look, the time, we have our money market stuff, weather, all the Microsoft widgets you would expect. You could go ahead and close them out. I wonder if I can like drag, oh no, that's just a link. All right, so it doesn't look like we could put them on our desktop. Uh, maybe if I go like this, save for later. Yeah, so the widgets panel is something completely separate over there to the side. Um, we got notifications over here. So one notification, some apps were registered to start running. 
that is more than fine. Down here you have your nightlight, all settings and network, and you could go ahead and man manage your notifications up here. So that is our first look at Windows 11. Uh, just to show you guys before I uh, end this video here, if I go over here, do the old school, uh, my computer properties, you can see we are running Windows 11 Pro. One thing that I noticed during the installation of this system is there were, typical Microsoft thing, there was a ton of versions to choose from, including there was Windows Home, there was Windows Home Single Language Edition, uh, there was Windows Pro, and there's one, I'm not quite sure what it is, but there is Windows Pro for workstations. So I'm not sure what the differences, differences are between all of these quite yet, but they are there. Now, personally, overall, I do like the direction that Windows is going with Windows 11, especially this thing right here. This, this is what does it for me. This, that is a super cool feature, uh, and I don't know where they get it from. It's a Microsoft feature, so they get it from somewhere else for sure, <laughs> but th that's something that's super cool. Is it good enough for me to use Windows? Nah. Um, if you're currently on Windows right now, I would recommend you check out my top 25 free and open source applications so you could go ahead and start migrating to free and open source software. There's a tons of great stuff, so I do recommend you check out that video. Also, I found out about all this on Twitter. I am on Twitter, so please go follow me by clicking on that picture right there. That doesn't make too much sense, but click on that. It'll take you to my Twitter. With all that said, I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day. Do not fit for <laughs> Do not forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Again, have a beautiful day and goodbye.